Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. No han venido todos y como ya es el último día, ya no quieren, dicen. Vamos a esperar un poco para que entren los demás y así comenzar ya con, con la última sesión para que estemos por lo menos la mayoría. Okay, we are going to begin because you know that uh, this is the last day of this course. So this is the last session that we are going to perform in uh, this module. So we are going to end with the two um, parts of the past that we are uh, talking about. Um, we were talking about the past tenses yesterday, uh, and we were talking about simple past and past continuous. In this case, we are going to talk about past perfect and past perfect continuous. Um, we are going to like talk about uh, the uses of these uh, two different forms. And in this case, it is like, it says that it's kind of complicated, uh, but you know that we are going to make it like uh, kind of easy to understand because we already have the knowledge, uh, we have the information about uh, these di different structures. And at the end, when we make this review of the topics that we already know, um, we find these topics very easy at the end. So in this case, we just need to focus and to pay attention to the elements that we need for each of these um, structures. And then we are going to master this information at the end. And you know that you are going to be intermediate level. So you are going to find more topics that are kind of complicated or um, it requires uh, more attention but at the end, if you are paying attention and you can uh, investigate more about the, the topics and you practice the things that you are learning, you are going to feel the, that the topics that you are going to see during the other sessions, during the other modules are kind of uh, simple. Because you know that uh, it depends on the, and on the level that we are, but in this case, uh, you are going to find topics that you already know. And the thing is that it is important to remember some information that we have related to different topics. It is not like you are going to um, read some very uh, difficult paragraph or you are going to talk about um, some articles related to inform, um, investigation, related to animal or something like that, because in that case, it's not related to that. Uh, you're just going to continue with these kind of topics that are grammatical, um, topics that are related to vocabulary, uh, topics in which you are going to express your ideas or 
to talk about more. But in this case, it's not like we are going to focus on a specific vocabulary for um, a specific area. Uh, for example, uh, medication, um, vitamin. So in, uh, I think in some topics that you are going to develop in advanced level, you are going to talk about the environment. That is a, a topic that you are going to see. But it is related to, to um to how you or the ideas that you have to protect the earth and also to express your ideas about a specific topic in this case. But you are going to see something related to that a uh, kind of topics because you know that is very important that we talk about uh, the environment and the contamination and how to um help the earth to be healthy and all of that things but you're going to see something related to that in the next level or in the other levels that you are going to to pass in in this case so we're going to begin with the topics that we have for today. In this case, we are going to continue with the past tenses, and we are going to talk about the past perfect. We are going to see what are the different elements that we have in this um in this tense or in this category. We are going to see the uses that we have for the past perfect. Um, we are going to understand what is the um the main idea or the main thing about this um, structure. So it says that we are going to make the past perfect using had plus past participle. Ayer estuvimos viendo la comparación entre las oraciones en presente y en pasado. En este caso, en el presente perfecto, veíamos que utilizamos el auxiliar have. Ahora lo que nosotros vamos a hacer para el pasado perfecto es utilizar el pasado de ese auxiliar. Entonces, cuando hablamos de forma o de form, we make the past perfect by using the auxiliary have, but in this case in past, had plus the past participle. Utilizamos nuestro, nuestro auxiliar have en pasado y también nuestro verbo principal en pasado. So in this case, we are going to continue with that uh, form that we use in the present. So in this case, we are just going to uh, change the auxiliary that is the uh, one that is telling me what is the time that I am using for this statement. So what are the uses that we have for this past perfect? In this case, it said we use it when one action happens before another past action. Vamos a utilizarlo cuando accione o una acción pasa antes que otra acción, pero en pasado. Quiere decir que vamos a estar utilizando eh, para hablar de acciones, una que sucede antes de la otra. And we are going to see the example. We have two different examples for this one. The number one is the film has started when we arrive. The film had started when we arrive. So in this case, we can uh, change a little bit the idea and we can say also the film starts before 
we arrive. Entonces estamos diciendo que una acción sucede antes que otra acción en pasado. Y el ejemplo dice que la película había comenzado cuando mmm, ellos llegaron. Entonces, pues obviamente, si lo hacemos simple, la película eh, comenzó antes de que llegáramos al lugar. Entonces, ya había comenzado cuando nosotros llegamos al cine, por ejemplo. So, in that case, the first action happened before the second one. Es algo que pasa antes de otra acción que estamos realizando en ese momento. Number two. And in this case, um, it's like the same uh, statement, but we are going to specify different forms in which we can like talk about the same, the same thing. En este caso, vamos a hacerlo diferente. Simplemente va a estar en pasado. Aquí no va a estar en pasado perfecto, sino que aquí simplemente vamos a agregar los verbos en pasado. No le vamos a agregar la estructura. Si nosotros no estuviéramos utilizando la estructura, quedaría de la siguiente forma. The film start when we arrive. And the explanation of the thing that we want to say is that we arrive at the same time the film is starting. I mean, this one is with a Z. The film started when we arrived. En este caso, no estamos utilizando la estructura del de pasado perfecto. In this case, we're just using simple past. The film started when we arrived. This means that we arrived at the same time the film started. Llegamos al mismo tiempo en que la película estaba comenzando. Pero llegamos a donde. Puede que hayamos llegado al lugar, pero no justo donde se estaba eh, proyectando la película. Porque obviamente nos estamos refiriendo a que la película ya había comenzado cuando nosotros llegamos. Entonces ya se estaba proyectando. In this case, we are going to use uh, time expressions such as before, um, by the time, and when. En este caso sí tenemos que ser bastante cuidadosos con el pasado perfecto. Esta es una parte mmm, ¿Cómo podemos decirlo? Esta es una parte muy corta de los temas gramaticales, el pasado perfecto pues es como que solo tiene un uso en realidad y tenemos que recordar que no tenemos que sobreusar la estructura del eh, pasado perfecto. Porque esto lo vamos a utilizar más que todo cuando estas acciones suceden antes de nuestra acción principal. Quiere decir que así como está el ejemplo de la película, yo voy a utilizar el pasado perfecto antes de mi acción principal. ¿Cuál es entonces la acción principal en esa oración? We arrive, cuando llegamos. Y antes de eso... Yo digo que la película había comenzado antes que yo, como sujeto, realizara la acción de llegar. Entonces, cuando queramos hacer ese tipo de, de oraciones en las que tenemos nuestra acción, antes de nuestra acción tenemos que utilizar el pasado perfecto. Pero en otras situaciones, pues no va a ser de esa forma. So, in that case, we need to remember that we eh, are not going to overuse the past perfect. In this case, it's just for actions that happen before the main action. 
Let me see if we can. How many times is this one? Oh, it's kind of. It's kind of long. It's a it's a, a grammar show, in which we have someone that, that is like asking questions, and is related to to the uh, past perfect. Um, we have three questions about the past perfect, and is explaining the use of the of had in this case. Um. Let me see. We have two people that is going to answer the questions and he is going to make, I think, three different questions. Um, but it's seven minutes. So, um, we are not going to to complete this video right now because I'm, I, I'm just going to send to you the video, but we are not going to like see the video right now. In this case, it's for uh, later. In this case, it's like they are correcting a statement uh, using the past perfect. Les, les están mostrando oraciones Y tienen que arreglarlas, ¿verdad? Utilizando las reglas del pasado perfecto. Y ahí se va viendo, ¿verdad? Ustedes van a tener tiempo para poder pausar el video, leer la oración que se les muestra a los participantes y ustedes pueden hacer sus correcciones. En ese caso, ustedes vuelven a darle play al video y eh, van a ver si la respuesta está correcta o no, así como ustedes la han pensado. También se va a mostrar eh, como algunas um, como algunas especificaciones del past perfect. Eh, they are explaining the uses of the past perfect that in this case is um, related to the things that we are uh, learning right now. So in this case, we are going to see different activities that they are performing and we can be part of the activities that we can see on the video. So in that case, you can like interact with the video and correct the end, the, the sentences that we have there. And we are going to see the people uh, telling what is the correct answer in which um, cases uh, they are incorrect and to make them in the correct form. So in this case, I'm going to show you, I mean, I'm going to send to you the video and you can like see the video later and you can practice with this because it's part of the past perfect. So I'm going to send to you right now the video. Okay, let me see if I can send to you this one. Okay. There you have. That is the past part of, uh, perfect and it's called the grammar game show. You can do it later. It is not necessary that you can like see the video right now because it is not like we have a lot of time. In this case, you're going to have a seven minutes in this case, but uh, also it's going to be kind of long. Va a ser como un poco más largo porque aquí ustedes pueden interactuar, ¿verdad? Con las actividades que aparecen ahí. Es básicamente como... Lo podemos ver como un pequeño examen en el cual nosotros vamos a, a poner a prueba lo que sabemos sobre el past perfect. Eh, ya que en ese caso, ustedes lo que pueden hacer es, como les decía, pausar el video, eh, leer las oraciones que aparecen ahí, corregirlas como ustedes creen que quedaría eh, mejor, Y luego ver las respuestas ahí mismo, ¿verdad? Todas las actividades 
¿Qué están haciendo ellos ahí? Ok. Then we are going to talk about the past uh, continuous. And in this case, we are going to have um, an activity. And in this case, it is related to answering some questions. So I'm going to explain to you the use of the past perfect continuous. And then we are going to make the, the activity. And I think that we are going to have a kind of a couple of minutes left, and I'm going to talk about a little bit about the future. Vamos a hablar un poco sobre el futuro, ya que vamos a tener un poco de tiempo para hacerlo. Estos últimos dos eh, partes del pasado son bastante cortos, entonces creo que vamos a poder hacer un pequeño review del futuro. Ok, next one. Past perfect continuous. Okay, in this case is just to add the verb in ing. Eso ya lo sabemos cómo utilizar el continuo, que es cuando agregamos, ¿verdad? Eh, la forma ing al verbo principal, pero vamos a ver cuál es la forma que se utiliza o la estructura que podemos utilizar para este. So, in this case, we form the past perfect continuous with has plus being plus verb plus ing. Okay, esa es como la estructura que vamos a utilizar con el past perfect continuous. Vamos a agregar had, being, y luego agregamos nuestro verbo en forma continua o gerundio con el ing. ¿Cuáles son los usos que le vamos a dar a esta estructura? In this case, we use it to show that an action which started in the past continued up to another point in the past. Vamos a hablar o vamos a utilizar esta estructura para mostrar que una acción que ya había comenzado en el pasado continúa hacia otro punto, pero que también está en el pasado. No nos traspasamos, ¿verdad?, de la barrera del de tiempo, sino que son acciones que suceden en el mismo espacio, que es el pasado. Pero ya vamos a ver a qué se refiere esto. So we're going to see the examples. Example number one. It says, oh, in this case, it's not present. It is G. Okay, number one. She had been living in Italy for three years when she lost her job. She had been living in Italy for three for three years when she lost her job. Ella había estado viviendo en Italia por tres años. ¿Cuándo? Importante. Cuando vayamos a utilizar estas estructuras, una antes que la otra, vamos a utilizar when. Entonces, ella había estado viviendo en Italia por tres años. cuando Ella perdió su trabajo. ¿En qué momento? Pues obviamente en el pasado. Entonces, aquí son acciones, ¿verdad? Que tienen que ver con el pasado. 
y no estamos hablando, ¿verdad?, de que ella estaba en un lugar y luego se fue a otro lugar y pasó en el pasado, sino acciones que se realizan en ese momento en el pasado. Así como acá, en uno estaba diciendo que vivía en un lugar cuando ella perdió su trabajo. Son dos acciones que se llevan a cabo en el pasado. Next one. I had been waiting for 10 minutes before the bus came. Había estado esperando por 10 minutos antes de que viniera el bus. O sea, ya tenía 10 minutos esperando a que llegara el bus o que pasara el bus. By the time Steve arrived, I had been working for nearly eight hours. By the time Steve arrived, I had been for nearly eight hours. Para el momento en el que llegó Steve, yo había estado trabajando aproximadamente ocho horas. With the past perfect, we use time expressions such as for five hours, for two weeks, for a long time, by the time. We can also use it to talk about the cause of something in the past. También tenemos otro uso que es para um, hablar acerca de la causa de algo en el pasado. O sea, vamos a hablar de causas en, esta, en este tipo de estructura. And we are going to see the examples. Susan was sweating because she had been running. Susan estaba sudando porque ella había estado corriendo. Es la explicación o la causa de algo. ¿Por qué estaba sudando Susan? Bueno, porque había estado corriendo, se había estado ejercitando. Next one. Henry was late because he had been studying. Henry es, eh, llegó tarde porque había estado estudiando.
Bien, vamos a hacer dos actividades. La primera es uh, practice when to use past perfect versus per, uh, past perfect continuous. We are going to choose um, some um, answers and then we are going to answer some questions. Son dos partes. Una es donde vamos a escoger la respuesta correcta y la otra es donde vamos a ver una imagen y contestar unas preguntas. So we are going to see activity one. Choose the correct answer. But I'm going to put the exercise here. So give me a moment. In this case, we have um, five of these. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to put the statements here. I'm going to separate a little bit because we don't need to make like something very confusing. And this one, yes, like this. So we are going to see what are the statements. Ahí tenemos las cinco, verdad, eh, oraciones. Así que vamos a leerlas detenidamente, vamos a pensar en qué, eh, qué estructura podemos utilizar para cada una de ellas. En este caso, pues tenemos cinco oraciones, así que tenemos cinco minutos para pensar sobre ellos y para responder cuál es la mejor opción para cada una de estas oraciones. So, eh, it is 8.28, I guess, or 8.29, almost. So... Like 8.35, 8.34, kind of, a las 8.34.35 más o menos, vamos a dar nuestra respuesta. So, you can analyze the, um, the statements that you have on the screen. So, let's go.
Okay, let's see. In the first one, we have the children were tired because they had play all morning. Or we have um, the children were tired because they had been playing all morning. In this case, the first of the second option is the best one. The first. The first one. Uh, the children were tired because they had played all morning. Los niños estaban cansados porque habían jugado toda la mañana. I guess it's the second one. Okay, in this case, it's the second one. Yes, why? Because we are talking about two different actions. And we are talking about one that is like talking about the, the cause. Estamos hablando de la causa. Es lo que acabamos de eh, ver en la, de, en la parte de arriba. Donde dice que explicamos una causa de algo. Y aquí pues estamos diciendo que los niños estaban cansados porque habían estado jugando toda la mañana. Second one, the customers were angry because the waiter had forgotten the order. Or the customers were angry because the waiter had been forgetting their order. It's the same. The second, second one? Yeah. Okay. I, I think. Okay, in this case, it says the customer were angry because el, los clientes estaban enojados porque el mesero había olvidado o había estado olvidando su orden. Había olvidado o había estado olvidando su orden. Olvidado. Había olvidado, ¿verdad? En este caso sería had forgotten their order. Ok, very good. Third one. He had married. He had married her two years before we met. He had been marrying her two years before we met. What is the best option? Had married or had been marrying? Mm, I think the second one. The second one. Had been marrying her. Yes, because uh, the, the, it's similar to the roller, no? The, um, when, when you use uh, the, Before. before. Uh -huh. Ok, pero en this case, él se había estado casando con ella dos años antes de conocerlos o de conocernos. O él se casó con ella dos años antes de conocernos. Se casó. Ah, had married. En este caso, eh, vamos a tratar de darle un sentido, ¿verdad? Tratemos de, de, de darle el sentido a lo que nos está tratando de decir. Sí se parece a la regla, porque está diciendo que pues, se, eh, se hizo una cosa antes de, pero pues en este caso no quedaría uh, bien si decimos él se había estado casando con ella porque es como que se repitiera esa acción varias veces. En este caso, él simplemente se casó. Next one. I had never stayed eh, in London until 2012. Or I had never been studying in London until 2012. Yo eh, nunca me había quedado en Londres hasta el 2012. Yo nunca me había estado quedando en Londres hasta el 2000, 
12. The first? The first one. Very good. Very good. Had never okay. stayed. This one. Nunca me había quedado en Londres hasta el 2012. The next one. The last one also. We had tried um, the door for several hours before Anna found her key. We had uh, been trying the door for several hours before, before Anna found her key. Habíamos estado tratando, o en este caso, habíamos tratado de, en este caso es abrir, ¿verdad? De abrir la puerta por varias horas antes de que Anna encontrara su llave. O habíamos estado tratando de abrir la puerta por varias horas antes de que Ana encontrara su llave. Been trying. The second. The second one, okay, had been trying. Habíamos The estado, one? yes, habíamos estado okay. tratando. Very good. So, in this case, we have this, um, this activity done. Now, we are going to see the image. We have an image uh, in which we are going to uh, speculate. So in this case, we're going to um, like construct the answers in our minds. Vamos a tratar de construir la respuesta en nuestra cabeza. O sea, vamos a tratar de analizar la imagen y al mismo tiempo vamos a tratar de responder las preguntas. So we have four different uh, questions that are asking something about the answer that you are going to see. And in this case, I'm going to put the image and also the questions. So you need to, to analyze the image because it is a photo and you are going to find different elements in the photograph. And then I'm going to write also the four questions at the same time. So we are going to have the both things. Vamos a tener las dos cosas, la foto y las preguntas. Y en este caso es para que ustedes puedan hacer como una especulación de qué es lo que está pasando en la fotografía. So, let's see the photo and the question. So, in this case, um, you are going to put all your new knowledge to a test. And we are going to look at the photo and answer the questions that we have below the photo. And we are going to use the different past tenses. Aquí vamos a utilizar los cuatro. Tenemos una pregunta para cada uno. Ahí ustedes deciden en cuál pregunta responden con cada um, tense. Because we have four. So you need to, to see the question and then you are going to answer with the specific tense that you want you to use. But I need to do this one. A little bit shorter. I'm going to move to the next page because it's it's better like this, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because I need to look the four the four questions. Yes, like this. Okay. We have the photo and you are going to answer the following questions. Remember, you need to use the four different tenses in past. Vamos a utilizar los cuatro um, tiempos que tenemos en el pasado para responder las preguntas. So this is the photo and we have the first question. Where was this photo taken? Why was the man looking at the people in the background when the photo was taken? What had happened just before the photo was taken? And where had the man been going before the photo was taken? Primero, ¿dónde se tomó la foto? Segundo, ¿por qué el hombre está mirando a las personas que están atrás cuando la foto fue tomada? Tres, ¿qué estaba pasando justo antes de que la foto se tomara o fuera tomada? Y número cuatro, ¿dónde estaba el hombre o a dónde iba el hombre o estaba yendo el hombre antes de que la foto fuera tomada. Ahora, si vemos las estructuras de las preguntas, nos podemos basar también en las estructuras de ella para utilizar el 
um, la parte eh, eh, parecida or the best tense or the best um, part of the past tense para responder. Podemos ver en la primera. Where was this photo taken? Podemos utilizar pasado simple. The photo was taken in a... Y decimos un lugar, ¿verdad? Luego en la segunda podemos utilizar pasado continuo, luego pasado perfecto, luego pasado perfecto continuo. But in this case, it's like you have the decision to answer. And in this case, I'm going to give you time. Uh, I guess five minutes. Cinco minutos. 8.50, ustedes empiezan a colocar sus respuestas de una sola vez en grupo. One, two, three, and four. Short answers. Respuestas cortas. No nos alarguemos tanto. Tratamos de ponerlas en el chat y la vamos a ir leyendo para ver cuáles son las respuestas que ustedes tienen. So, let's go to the eh, activity. So, we have five minutes to complete. And then you can uh, answer on the chat and I'm going to read the answer. So let's go.
Okay, in this case, we have an answer for the, the activity. So we are going to read what are the answers that you have or the ideas that you have about this photo. In the number one, where was this photo taken? We have the photo was taken in a hotel, okay? Number two, why was the man looking at the people in the background when the photo was taken? He was looking, in that case, you're using past. He was looking at the people because they were making noise. Oh, it could be. Number three, what had happened just before the photo was taken? Before the photo was taken, the man was walking. Okay, very good. Number four, where had the man been going before the photo was taken? The man had been going to the kitchen before the photo was taken. Oh, very good answers. Thank you. Someone said the photo was taken in a hospital. Maybe. It could be. We have different options in this case. If someone has a, another ideas, can write on the chat because we're just going to have um, like four or three minutes or less to complete the, uh, the session. So we are almost, almost done with this, um, this course. So we have just a couple of minutes to end. Okay, we are just in the last minutes of this uh, session. So I just want to say thank you for your time because I know that is like something very complicated for some of you to be in these um, kind of uh, courses because uh, you have a lot of things to do during the day and also you are uh, still working on the nights. So I know that is complicated to be in, in this kind of uh, spaces. But thank you for coming every night with this of this um, course and in these sessions. You are doing a great job, so keep going and you are going to um, achieve your goals at the end of the, the whole thing. So we're going to end the sessions here. This is the last day. So thank you all for your participation and for being in these um, uh, sessions in these past four weeks. So I um, just want to say good luck for everyone. And I hope all the uh, activities, all the uh, goals that you want to, to achieve, you can do it in the future so keep going and thank you for your time so this is the end goodbye and good luck thank you miss thanks bye. to you bye bye
Thank you, Miss. Bye bye, Miss. Thanks to you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.